So I would love to welcome, we have Arian, we have Kazuhiro, we have David, and we have Lucy. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, could you just, um, just to start briefly, tell us a little bit about your role in the film um, that you've been nominated for? So I was um, makeup and hair to Gary Oldman, and I applied half the makeup with David and applied the wig and maintained his hair and makeup on set. Great. Hi, I'm David. I was the prosthetic supervisor on Darkest Hour, and I was brought in to oversee, you know, what you see on screen today of Gary with Lucy. My name is Kazu. Uh, I did uh, hair and makeup design for David Oldman. Yep. Hi, I'm Aryan. Uh, I designed uh, Augie Pullman makeup for Wonder. Great. Um, I think let's get straight into a Darkest Hour clip and then we can talk more about the face <laughs> that we want to hear about. Hardly seems like there's a war on at all. You know I've never ridden a bus. Sir? I've never queued for dread. I believe I can boil an egg, but only because I've seen it done. <laughs> well, that was quite easy. Yes, it was. <clears throat> I believe we are to meet regularly. Once a week, I'm afraid. How is... How are you for Mondays? Uh, I shall endeavour to be available on Mondays. Four o'clock? I nap at four. Is that permissible? No, but necessary. I give you your father, my beloved husband, the Prime Minister. <laughs> the Prime, Prime Minister. Minister. Here's to, um, to not buggering it up. <laughs> not buggering it up. Collectively, we are looking at the collapse of Western Europe in the next few days. Should the public be told? Not yet. First, we must rouse our old friends to an heroic resistance. I need not impress upon you the trouble faced by the Western Hemisphere. Without your support in some fashion... I know, I know. You are on my mind day and night. Look, we could possibly... Mr. President. Uh, I mean to say... We are facing uh, the gravest odds. We could take your planes to about a mile from the Canadian border. Mm -hmm. And then, if you send across a team of horses from Canada, nothing motorized, then you could pull them over the border yourself. How does that sound? Horses. Um, you, you did say a, a, a team of horses. Hitler will not insist on outrageous terms. He will know his own weaknesses. He will be reasonable. When will the lesson be learned? When will the lesson be learned? How many more dictators must be a wound, a peace. Good God, give it immense privileges before we learn. You cannot reason with a tiger when your head is in its mouth. Belgium has fallen. They will surrender at midnight. France will soon follow suit. We shall not flag or fail. We shall go on to the end. We shall fight in France. We shall fight 
on the seas and oceans. We shall fight with, with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. Yeah. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. Yeah. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender! <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even know where to begin with my questions about Churchill's face because it's such an amazing, transformative thing to see. But l let's start with new technologies. What kind of technologies did you use to make the jowls alone? <laughs> new technology. Uh, what we used uh, is a base very kind of traditional. Mm -hmm. the, what we tried to do new is more like artistic execution. Mm -hmm. So um, the difficult part was uh, basically like Gary didn't look like Charger at all. It doesn't look like Charger at all. So try to figure out what would be the good balance to make him look like a Charger, but at the same time try not to make him look like wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. So it had to be good balance. And also for me, like a sculpture, bring a good shape Looks like a charger, but because especially like a charger has a really short face, like a long face, but Gary is oval, yeah. so I had to make it so kind of kind of a create the illusion by bringing a neck forward and put the chin higher, so you have a shorter face and the, lots of those tiny detail and also create a really fine wig mm -hmm. to change the whole head shape, and because. Um, we had the talk with uh, Gary that, okay, do you want to shave your head and save 20 minutes from makeup time or spend 10, 20 minutes extra time to keep your hair on? Mm -hmm. And so he, he preferred to shave his hair. He shaved. Yeah, so oh, right. that's kind of thing. And you know, we are really fortunate to have uh, David and Lucy. They are amazing, sweet people to apply makeup every day because I was kind of, I'm the one who, got out <laughs> from uh, <laughs> our schedule and uh, choose another life. So, yeah, but uh, it was great. You've got the work-life balance. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. yeah work-life balance. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell me about the fine-tuning then of the makeup. So you've got the prosthetics on. How do you make him look human? David? <laughs> <laughs> How do you make him look human? Um, uh, well, I guess, you know, it starts off with the prosthetic pieces, you know, that are um, made to a really close match to Gary's skin tone, and then they're painted every single day because the pieces can't be reused. So um, I think the challenge was trying to... Because it's over such a short period of time, I, I think it's over five or six weeks in history, so Gary doesn't change or Churchill doesn't change over that time, which is, I guess, kind of good because you don't have as much continuity to deal with, but you have continuity because he has to look exactly the same every time you apply the makeup. Mm -hmm. So... The challenge was making sure the pieces were pre-painted and looked the same every every day that we applied the makeup. And we did 48 shoot days in the end, um, plus rehearsal days and camera test days. So there was 61 times he was in the makeup for, and he had to look the same every time. Um, and the same with the wig. You know that Lucy looked after. We had five wigs made that all had to look the same, and they were made in LA and shipped over. So whenever they would arrive, Lucy would have to then match them. To the wig that we already had <laughs> so oh you know he just has to look the same every time yeah what were the biggest challenges about sort of maintaining that throughout the day of filming um probably because we were a very small team on set so sort of david and i and uh, with the pieces coming in daily david would spend time painting them so i would be looking after the makeup and hair and david would come back and forth so because there wasn't very many of us. Um, it was, I suppose, the challenges was looking after the makeup and doing the hair checks simultaneously. Mm -hmm. But fortunately for us, Gary was really patient, so he let he allowed us to just maintain it all day long. And so then, when they called checks, I could just go in for the important things that were standing out. No major and disasters the then. Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> 
Um, let's have a look at Wonder then. Nari, and you can talk us through um, what you did for this. I mean, I bawled my way through the film. <laughs> so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's an incredible piece of work. So, yeah, let's have a look at that clip. I'll meet you right here after school. Okay? Right here. I love you. Love you too. I'll see you later. Can you hear me? If they stare, let them stare. You can't blend in when you were born to stand out. We're gonna have a little man to man. Now, I gotta stop here because past this point is a no dad zone and you don't wanna walk up with your parents because it's not cool. But you're cool. I know I am, but technically most dads aren't, so. And neither are these helmets. Hey, two rules. First, only raise your hand once a class, no matter how many answers you know, except for science. Crush them. Check. Second, you're gonna feel like you're all alone, Augie, but you're not. Should we lose this? Come on. Costumes are for Halloween. Prepare for blast off. I love you. I love you too. Have fun. Bye. Have an excellent mission and Godspeed. We are ready to proceed at this time. Dear God, please make them be nice to you. Can anybody tell me what this word means? Anybody? No? Precepts are rules for really important things. Like mottos. Like mottos or like famous quotes or like um, lines from a fortune cookie, right? Precepts can help motivate us. They can help guide us when we have to make decisions about really important things, okay? So who wants to read this month's precept? <laughs> What about you? What's your name? Summer. Summer. Want to give it a shot? When given the choice between being right or being kind, choose kind. Mr. Tushman went out of his way to tell me how sweet those kids were and that Julian is apparently quite the dream. No. Not a dream? Is he one of those kids that acts one way in front of grown-ups and then another way in front of kids? Yeah, I guess. Well, I know it's hard, but you have to understand that he probably feels badly about himself. Mm -hmm. And when someone acts small, you just have to be the bigger person, right? Right. Right. Yeah, I'll get the pizza. Yeah, get the Look at me, Augie. That kid sounds like a real jerk. If someone pushes you, you push back. Don't be afraid of anyone. Why are we whispering? Because I'm afraid of mom. You just gotta be a bigger person and rise above it. It's that easy. So, Arian, you're working with Jacob Tremblay, who is just an amazing kid yes, and actor. Yes, yes. But, you know, the challenges of working with a child, not a not an adult. Talk me through those. Um, well, everything was different. I mean, everything from, from just sitting in a chair, his life cast to, I mean, he's very small. He was nine when we started, um, but he's very small for his age. He's more like a six or seven year old mm -hmm. in the sense of like how big his head is. And, um, and then he was the lead on top of that. And we couldn't lean on anything because other kids have been in prosthetics before in films, of course, but I couldn't think of one where one was, you know, the lead mm -hmm. role in full silicone yeah. uh, because nothing is his, you know, his neck, everything <laughs> is, is fake. Um, so that was an enormous challenge. And on top of that, you're copying something that's a medical condition, that's a real thing that exists. Um, so, um, and then at one point production was deciding, well, if makeup doesn't work, then we're gonna go fully CG, but there's no budget for that, so we might not make the movie. And it, that kind of bothered me, mm -hmm. uh, you know, anyway, uh, rambling on, but. <laughs> no, but the, so talking to uh, Kazu about the technologies, there, there must have been 
I think I saw quite a few different structures that you had to use. Can you talk through some of the more specific ones? Um, well, just to copy the condition that he has, Augie has treacher Collins syndrome, and they have underdeveloped cheekbones and ears. And, and um, just to kind of copy that look or give the illusion that Jacob has that, um, uh, it's, it's a very kind of tortoise-like profile, if you will. Uh, it's a sloped-off neck and a lot of scars from the surgeries. Um, the nose, and then um, to pull the eyes down, we had a skull cap uh, out of carbon fiber underneath the wig and the prosthetics mm. with a wire system that ran through his eye bags that we could lock and unlock because I knew I couldn't glue his eyes down, you know, for that long. Uh, we could shoot, it was nine hours from door to door, so by the time makeup was done, we had maybe uh, five to six hours of shooting if it would count an hour of school or mm. lunch or something. So. Um, and then there was a big neck prosthetic that went from his shoulders, his chest up, um, his chin, and then the forehead with the nose, and then the wig. Um, we had three wigs. Uh, we rotated them out every day. Um, Treat your Collins kids tend to grow their hair a little longer because they have underdeveloped ears. So there's no ear, actually. There's just a, like a little ear nub mm -hmm. at the bottom. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just, it was, oh, and then of course, having the eyes pulled down, um, it kind of looked not right. It made it look kind of melted or, mm -hmm. say, I keep saying that, a burn victim-like almost. So we gave him contact lenses so to fill up the bottom of the eye white. Wow. Um, and then he has teeth, slightly yeah. upper teeth, because he has a cleft palate. So, and it kind of pushed his upper lip out mm -hmm. just slightly, just to carry, help that tortoise profile. How did Jacob deal with that? That's a lot for a It is a lot for any actor, yeah. uh, and let alone for him. So I, I wasn't sure if I could do it, but he, I, I said, I gotta meet him first, and I gotta meet his parents. Mm -hmm. So he came to the shop, and I just needed to feel his energy a little bit. And uh, he just walked in, and he was so little. And, uh, <laughs> but what a, and I, everybody says that, you know, working with this person is great to work with, he's mm -hmm. so professional, he really was great. Yeah. Um, but I did know that about, because we had about 40 days of shooting with him in the makeup and he doesn't change. It's, it's in like a year of his life. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I knew that, you know, 20 days in, he'll probably have a, a moment and he did. But mm -hmm. luckily the parents were very, very supportive and uh, everybody was great on that mm -hmm. to help him through that, you know. This is a question for all of you. How do you sort of, where's that line between having enough prosthetics that the actor looks like what you need them to look like and allowing their expressiveness to come through? Let's, Kazu, let's start with you. Kazu? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it's just the balance of what is needed and what is necessary and also the condition of the actor's skin. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if an uh, actor is young, it's kind of easy, I mean, when skin is so tight, the expression transfer really well to the surface. But as actor get older, you know, like I'm getting old and the, the skin slide around on surface and if I put the piece on it, mm -hmm. it just doesn't move and the, the edge start to show up. Mm -hmm. So according to that, um, sometimes we have to decide the, uh, where the edge ends to the area that almost like kind of risky, mm -hmm. you know, right in the center of the cheek and something like that. So it's really depend on the case by case. So um, we have to do a test and figure out what would be the best answer. David, you worked with um, Gary previously to working yeah. on Darkest Hour. Does that make a difference Do you, when you have a bit more of a connection with an actor? Is there more trust there? Um, yeah, I guess so. It's, it's because when Gary first asked me about Darkest Hour and I knew that it was going to be the most intense job I'd taken on, it was quite nice knowing that I'd worked with Gary. And when I finished on that, it was Hitman's Bodyguard that I did. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I finished, I wanted to work with Gary again straight away because we just got on so well together. We only spent a few weeks working together, but we have a similar sense of humour and you know, which goes a long way when you're sitting in a chair for four hours yeah. every day for several months. Um, you get to see people in, you know, I guess in their highs and their lows mm -hmm. for just stuff that's going on in their life and on the production and stuff like that. So I think it's important to be able to get on with them. Um, it's similar to why I brought Lucy on as well, you know, because I just knew, having worked with Gary, that Lucy and Gary would get on. I knew that we would get on and it just kind of worked really well. So, yeah, and, you know, we're there... You know, our days were 18 hours a day, you know, at least. Um, 
So when you're with someone that amount of time, you, you really want to be able to get on and yeah. there not to be any tension. There was every now and then because it's just a difficult job, but yeah, of course. you know, 99% of the time, I think we all got on, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, is there a particular film that you've seen this year that you've really noticed and admired the prosthetics and the makeup on? Yeah, wonder. <laughs> Dark Tower. Yeah. 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 Such a love yeah. it. <laughs> um, you know, could you kind of see? Are you sort of looking at the prosthetics? Are you looking at you know what Irene was talking about in Wonder? Are you just sort of? I think when a makeup's done that well, you watch something and you forget that it's makeup. Well, mm -hmm. hopefully. Yeah. yeah. So, but I think as makeup artists, you always watch something and you just scan the whole time and. It, I think you're just trained to do that after a while. But. Yeah, is that the same with you? Were you sort of looking at Churchill's jowls going, how did they do this? Or oh, sure, sure. But it's also, like, you just enjoy the work, you know, mm -hmm. and you forget that it's makeup. Yeah. And that's, I think, um, a compliment uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. to all of the work. But, um, yeah, no, I, I enjoy seeing so many films. But, yeah, Dark Tower is amazing. Um, I'm going to open it up to you guys now, so if you have any questions, we have got a mic, so please put your hand up and wait for the mic to come to you. Yes, gentleman in the middle here. Uh, hello, firstly, congratulations uh, on all your work in the nominations. Um, I started in the mid-90s at Jim Henson's when every, all the prosthetics were shot on, on film. Uh, as things have moved into sort of 4K and, and HD and so on, I know Darkest Hour was shot on film, I'm not sure Wonder was not... Shot on film. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Was Wonder shot on film? I forget. Sorry. No, HD. HD. Yeah. So, how much does the uh, has the shooting format over the years uh, informed your decision makings in terms of technically? Um, well, I remember the first four, four days or so of shooting with with Augie. Um, we matched the silicone to his skin stone uh, and just help cut makeup time because again we have only an hour and fifteen minutes to get it on him. Uh, but um, when I saw the dailies, this type of camera they were using, it was very they pulled out a lot of red, more red in digital, I would say, that to pull out. And uh, so we upped that. Um, uh, on top of that, on, in case of Augie, um, I knew like lace eyebrows, it wouldn't work, so they're all individually punched in. For each set every day, um, because I knew that would show up. You can maybe get away with that on an adult because there's texture and color and speckling, but not on a kid. So just, I guess, more the fact that I was working with a nine-year-old, I had to battle some more, I guess. But I guess it counts for them as well. You know, it's uh, it, it pushes everybody, I would say, to you know, pick certain laces or colors or you know, less makeupy, I would say, painting and. Thank yeah. you. Oh, and I, I think it's also the, the creativity around lighting as well. So as much as you might have, whether it's shot on film or 4K or 8K is what they're doing now, which is insane. Um, you know, on Darkest Hour, if you've seen the entire film or just from those clips, you can, you can see the way they light the shot is, is really important, you know, because we have so much cross lighting to simulate sunlight coming through a window. And there's just, it just wants to pick everything up, whether it's just a stray hair or whether it's lace, or whether it's an edge, or whether it's the sheen, you know, the junction between prosthetic and skin, you know, all these things, everyone's pushing the boundaries. So people who want to create um, these really nice lighting effects, it then has a knock-on effect to us as well, I think. So it's not just the quality of the, of the 4K, 8K, or whatever it is. I think it's everything, you know, everyone's just up in their game a bit. And how close they go as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even super. you saw in some of those shots there, it's... Um, you know, we'd, we'd see the shot list for the day and it would say close-up of Gary reading whatever he's reading or something, and they do a shot, and you think, wow, that's close. You know, you're going, wow, we, we, we did it, that's great. And they say, right, now let's go in for the close-up. And you think, oh, my God. <laughs> that's so that's the close-up, and then they get another close-up, and then when they're in the close-up, they just keep pulling in even closer. You just think, oh, my God, it's insane. <laughs> Typically save it to the end of the day sometimes. Yeah, of course, it's always at the end of a 10- or 12-hour day, but, you know. <laughs> that's a lot of pressure on you guys to, like, keep that so perfect all the way through then. Yeah, well, and pressure on Gary to keep it looking good. You know, yeah. he's, he's yeah. so respectful of, of our craft, you know. He, he would sit still in the makeup chair for four hours and would only move if we asked him to move. Um, he'd be on set. He wouldn't sleep in the trailer. You know, lots of people you apply makeup to, they'd fall asleep 
and they wake up and there's either the impression of their iPhone in their face or <laughs> there's a bit of food or, you know, a pillow. You know, like you, you wake up and you get the red line sometimes, you know, you get all sorts of stuff. But yeah. Gary didn't want to sleep because he didn't want to ruin the makeup and he didn't want to go through the checks unless he had to. Mm -hmm. So he just found that if he didn't eat and if he did eat, he just made really small bits of food and he'd just be really careful about it. So, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of it is down to Gary as well. Yeah. It's not just us looking after it every day. It's, it's him looking after it for us, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would like to work with Gary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the model actor. Yeah. No, he's great. He's, he's, um, hats off to him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yes. Um, I wondered if you could tell me a bit more about the wigs. I was fascinated by the fact that they were, you were flying them in from, did you say LA? And what were they actually made of and how much did they cost and where, where do you source something like that from? <laughs> okay. Uh, so it was made by uh, Bob Krishmir and Diana Choi, and um, basically the lace we used was the English lace. It's a lady, like the finest lace we can get, and it's constructed on uh, Gary's head shape. And the hair was uh, baby European hair mixed with Angola, and so um, it was a kind of final decision to get that wig from LA. So after we did the test and the film test, as they sh start to shoot a uh, film with a uh, test wig, uh, as they finish, uh, I cut and dress and ship to London and uh, Lucy match with uh, all other wig. And we, we made a total of five and it's only lasted 10 days of the shooting because the lace is so fine, and after 10 days, we cannot use that anymore. So that's how we did it, yeah. How much did they cost? Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, it was um, for, usually they, they charge like $8,000. Wow. Yes, that's normal now. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Um, we've got time for one more question. There's a lady just at the back. Row there waving at you, Cass. Yeah. Oh, well, let's squeeze two in. Let's squeeze two in. Hi, I just want to ask what are the challenges on working with um, faces and skin that have Botox and fillers? That excludes the actor in wonder. Because obviously, I don't expect an actor. <laughs> Hopefully, Jacob hasn't got any it fillers or anything. <laughs> Oh, that's an interesting question, yeah. Have you worked on acting? Fair, I don't think well, Gary has well, much either. <laughs> Unfortunately, no, a lot of the actors <laughs> are, have contractual stuff. Mention any names of the actors. Right. I just want to know <laughs> the challenges on, uh, you know, the differences between working on, on skin and faces that don't have Botox and fillers, and then you have actors' faces that have Botox and fillers. Um, shall I just answer that one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've worked with an actress that, that I remember we did a life cast and then did the pieces for, and then when I arrived on location, it had done something, and it wasn't quite m matching up. It was very subtle, but just because of the light catching it and the texture for what she had done, uh, I had to re-sculpt it last, last day, like two days before shooting in the hotel and remold it, and, you know. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, they don't always tell you, and there's often contractual agreements between that. Uh, I can't talk that they can't do it, yeah. Um, right, sorry. Uh, I, I, I can't really answer that for me. I don't know, maybe <laughs> they have a better question. Just a last quick question, go on. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm just, it's to everybody, I'm just curious to know, for both Wonder and Darkest Hour, how long did you have from live cast through to the first day shooting to perfect the looks that you both executed? Yeah, uh, I, I, I was lucky. Um, so we did the live cast in end of June in 2016, and I did a, the first three test makeup, three different versions, after two months, after two months after the live cast, and then defined that version, and I spent another month to do uh, two other ones. And the fifth one was a kind of close to the final. And that was in, all in LA. And shipped that mold and everything to London. Actually, mold was shipped to Spain because we had to hire DDT to run all pieces for the filming. And we did a film test. And I think there was a, another, we spent a week be, between and another film test 
before, uh, that was a final final. So yeah, we did about eight, I think eight applications, mm -hmm. you know, rehearsals, because Gary wanted to be in, in full makeup for all the rehearsal days, um, which was, I guess, kind of good for us, because it just gave us a few days to, you know, hone the look really and get it signed off. So, um, but it, it just added another eight applications to the, the 50 that we were going to be doing for filming. So. <laughs> um. For Jacob, I think we had about two, two and a half months. Um, we came in and uh, we did two different tests because we had a lot to figure out with the helmet and the mechanics of that, uh, and then the hair and then the lens. I mean, again, just because everything was like mini, you know. Um, uh, and then I resculpted some of the bits when I when we arrived in Vancouver for shooting because I wasn't happy with some of it, and, uh, and that was it. So yeah, it was a. Great, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to our wonderful <laughs> panel. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.